there was a conference, something to do with double glazing. Are you in Oxford? Are you sure? What would you be doing in Oxford if there was no conference? I remember calling him. He said it was boring and he spent most of the time at the bar. Okay, I'll try my best to remember. Mm. I left the next day, Saturday. I slept for a few hours in the car. When I woke up, I came straight back. Uh, Simon wasn't returning my calls and I wanted to try and make up. I got back to the house and Simon wasn't there. And I... Oh, Is there a bin? Okay. I parked up in the street. It was busy, so I had to park down the end of the road. Walked up, knocked on the door, no answer. I took my keys out of my bag and unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. You can tell because the key doesn't turn when you try to turn it to the left. I walked in. Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. I couldn't see his shoes in the shoe rack. I shouted out. Um, I walked straight into the kitchen because he usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper. But he wasn't there. I touched the kettle. It was cold. I looked quickly in the living room. Nothing. So I walked upstairs to the bedroom and he wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. I had a shower. The phone rang whilst I was in the shower. I didn't answer it. I think it was Eric. Then I was just exhausted. So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, though I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again. This time I spoke to him. Then I called Doug and Elena. And then I decided to come and see you. Fair enough? No. It was just me and her. It was the name they were going to call their first child. They talked about it and were going to try when it came back. Florence's family had a history of first-born girls, so they were convinced it was going to be a girl. It's hard to know if this is all true. These are stories I remember, that I read when I was a child. Maybe I misread, maybe I misunderstood. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to remember what happened last week. So I moved out, got a small bed set, got my tattoo to mark the occasion. I was singing in a bar in the evenings, so I had some money, enough money to cover my rent. And I've been doing something similar ever since. I haven't put down any roots. I don't exist. Nothing else happened that night. We talked, then I said goodbye. Then next week I was singing the bar again and there he was. And again the next week, he offered to buy me a meal. I told them I had already eaten um, and so we got chips and ate them on the beach instead. When we said goodbye, he asked me to kiss him. <laughs> Romantic. I told her it was one of my boyfriends, someone I had met in the bar. I think she was happy. But I could tell she was thinking, why couldn't it happen to her and Simon? They were the ones with the real life. Why not them? I 
think so. I mean, to get into our garden, we'd have to climb through other gardens. All the gardens back onto each other, so you'd have to climb over one, two, three gardens to get to ours. I mean, did anyone see anything? Did anyone see anyone come and go? An intruder? His body. It didn't look real. And his throat. It looked like his throat had been cut. And I didn't see his glasses. He has these thick glasses. It doesn't always work. Mother wanted me to grow my hair long, but I kept cutting it myself. I wanted to look like my reflection. She always had short hair when she was little. Mother would hide the scissors, but I would find a way. Cut it with a bread knife, something like that. My reflection would always leave her house and go on adventures, but I never could. Mother taught me at home. And I had books and TV. Oh, TV was magical, but it was only on when it wanted to be, so I spent a lot of time reading books. <sighs> we were obsessed with fairy tales. Not just the pretty, pretty ones, but the traditional ones. They were dark and real, bizarre and violent. Felt like life. We had this huge old book that I think Mum must have bought from a library sale. The illustrations had thin tracing paper over them to protect them. They were in colour, shiny plates. At the front of the book was an index of illustrations. We read that more than the actual stories. We'd read aloud the captions and flip between the pictures. There was something intimate about peeling back the tracing paper and dressing the pictures. Rapunzel's hair is cut. The eagle plucks out his heart. The princess pricks her finger. Like I said before, it was three, something like that. I walked in, saw Simon. He was on the floor of the living room. His throat had been cut. There was a lot of blood. Instead, her story is that she'd waited for him to come back. She put on my wig, some of my clothes, pretended to be me. They talked. She'd enjoyed being me. He said he wanted to be with me. Then he took out a present, another mirror, just like the one he'd given her earlier. <laughs> that unique present. She went crazy, smashed the mirror. They argued, screamed, he hit her. So she grabbed a piece of the mirror and just swung it round. She cut his throat clean open. She'd only meant to scare him off.
Yes, I'm fine. No one is sick again. This happened some days. I'm pregnant. It's morning sickness. I wanted to see my reflection. I thought that if I touched her, something would happen. We would become one. One girl. The fairy tale was over, the witch was dead, and I'd be restored to my rightful place. our way of life. We would swap places and take it in turns to do things and we were very careful. Whoever had been out that day would come back and write a detailed diary so that we were on the same page. We had a list of rules that said what we could and couldn't do in any given situation. It was exhaustive. We lived a second life through those rules. Rules for things that could only ever happen inside our imaginations. And we would consider all the permutations of future events and agree rules to walk our way through them. Can you imagine? I tried. I tried to get pregnant too, but it didn't happen. I slept with so many boys, men, my body refused. I think my period stopped because hers had. I was pretty ill. I mean, how could we stay the same now? I felt like Hannah had really fucked things up. Set us down separate paths. We had become different. No, it's okay. The other detective has just gone to get me one. Must think it's very cool that their dad is a police detective. 